नमस्कार अ वेरी वॉर्म वेलकम टू एवरीबडी आई अजंता गुप्ता अलोंग विद माई कोलीग मिस्टर सौरभ सरदार मैनेजर फ्रॉम इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक बोर्ड ऑफ इंडिया आर हेयर टू टॉक अबाउट रिसेंट रेगुलेटरी रिफॉर्म्स अंडर द इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक कोड under the under the code there are various processes like corporate insolvency resolution process liquidation process voluntary liquidation process and for the individuals there is a resolution and bankruptcy process to run this processes it is important for the insolvency professionals creditors resolution applicants that they are aware about the provisions of the code and regulations and amendments made there too and it is equally important for the regulator to know about the requirements of the market to streamline these processes in order to achieve the objectives of the code that is early resolution and value maximization as well as balancing the interest of stakeholders and ibbi for amendments in the regulation adopts a consultative approach that is discussion papers are floated and thereafter public comments are sought after that the amendments are made directly going to the regulations uh, recent amendments in the code in june 2022 amendments were made in the information utility regulations wherein it was provided that any creditor who wants to initiate the crp applications like uh, financial creditor under section 7 or operational creditor under section 9 Uh, has to file a information of default with the iu that is information utility what this information uh, utility will do it will process this information utility uh, information of default into the record of default thereafter the, like, like three notices are being sent to the debtor thereafter like if the debtor confirms the record of default then that information of default the status will be authenticated and it is reflected in the green record of default in case a debtor disputes that default the status will be disputed and it is reflected in the red record of default otherwise it can be possible the debtor does not uh, respond to the uh, that default he is not have submitted any response then the status will be deemed to be authenticated and it is reflected as a yellow color however for the bankers which are which falls under the second schedule of the RBI act for them that in case the debtor does not respond that will be treated as to be authenticated and be reflected in the green record of default with this record of default the creditor will file an application for the initiation of the crp process one more amendment was made in the information utility regulations that is the iu will provide the information pertaining to the public announcements to the creditors who are registered with the iu so they are able to submit the claims timely and to avoid the litigation thereafter the amendment would also be made in september 2022 in insolvency professionals regulation to deal with the complex cases where the management of the uh, cd is very complex and it is so huge that we need an expertise to deal with such cases there therefore ip he has been enabled to act as an ip that is information professional entity earlier this ip is were providing the services support services to the ips now they can act as an ip so to act as an ip they have to change the objective clause and they can serve as an uh, support services or ip or they can provide both the services now the question is who will sign and act on the behalf of ipe it has been provided that only a partner or the director who is an ip shall act and assign on behalf of the ipe there is a fit and proper clause also in fit and proper clause or ipe as well as the partners and the director should uh, be a fit and proper person ibbi has specified the form double a for the registration of an ipe so what ip has to do then what it it has to be recognized with the uh, ibbi thereafter the ipe to become an ip will send the registration form to the ipa then it is registered followed by the ibbi that process for which we follow for the ip thereafter one more amendment was made in the ip regulation and it has been provided that ips not to accept 
or share any fees or charges from any professional or support services it has been provided for the under the code of conduct and now my uh, colleague saurabh sardar will take care of crp regulations thank you uh, thank you ajanta for that uh, introduction to the recent amendments that have been made uh, to the regulations that are framed by the ibbi i'll be taking you through the regulations the insolvency resolution uh, insolvency resolution for corporate persons regulations uh, the recent amendments that have been made uh, which were quite substantial uh, and uh, and market friendly uh, market friendly amendments have been made i'll be taking you through those uh, through those regulations ajanta uh, next slide please so uh, the first amendment that has been made uh, uh, made to the ibc is that uh, uh, the regulation is that the gstr 1 and the gstr 3b uh, forms have been uh, made mandatory while filing applications so this has been done because a lot of times we have seen that uh, in applications uh, ocs the operational creditors find it difficult to prove their uh, default uh, or the debt owed to them wherein uh, these uh, these forms that have been filed on a monthly basis these forms could uh, serve that purpose where uh, operational operational creditors would be uh, operational creditors would be able to use these forms to prove their uh, uh, prove their debt uh, that the comp- the corporate debtor owes to them secondly we have provided uh, uh, the different the, the definition we have provided the definition of significant difference which was earlier not there we have said that uh, 25% uh, differentiation between the revaluation done between the two registered valuers of the assets of the corporate debtor if that difference is 25% that would be cons- considered considered as significant difference and if there is a significant difference uh, a third valuation professional could be appointed for valuing the assets of the company thirdly uh, we have also made an amendment where creditors are, have been forced to share uh, uh, forced to share uh, relevant information with the irp and rp because a lot of times it's seen that the insolvency uh, professional or the resolution professional is unable to uh, gather information based on the records of the co- corporate debtor over which it has taken over but uh, a lot of information is already available with the creditors and if the creditors share this information that would be useful for the uh, useful for the process uh, and make it make it a lot smoother so a few examples uh, that have been stated in the slide are uh, the last valuation report stock statement uh, receivable statement audit reports stock audit reports uh title search reports technical officers report bank account statements these could be shared uh, these have to be shared with the irp or the rp when the process begins by the creditors also uh, a very important amendment has been made uh, to how avoidance transactions applications would be treated in the resolution plan this has to be provided for in the resolution plan presently there is no the earlier to this amendment there was no guidance as to how these applications would be dealt with because our experience has been that in the past these applications were pending for an indefinite period of time even after the corporate debtor was resolved and there was no guidance as to how these applications were to be treated so uh, by this amendment we have made it very clear that the resolution plan itself must provide for how uh, how these transactions have to be, have to be dealt with and secondly the manner of distribution uh, of these of the proceeds that come from these avoidance transactions uh, would also be uh, decided in the resolution plan so this uh, avoidance transactions are basically uh, a way of claw back of uh, clawing back lost value uh that that the company uh, that the company had lost because of uh, because of the various reasons because of related party transactions with because of bad uh, co- corporate governance practices that were going on before uh, the, the company went into uh, the insolvency process uh so the next coming to the next slide uh here uh, we have uh, made it very uh, uh, attractive for insolvency professionals to act as irp or rp uh because we have set a minimum fee uh, as to how much uh, uh, how much has to be paid to uh, to the irp or rp so if if the claim uh, value is less than uh, less than or equal to uh, 50 crores in that case a minimum uh, salary a minimum fee of 1 lakh per month has to be paid if it is more than 50 crores but less than 500 crores a minimum uh, fee of 2 lakhs has to be paid 
more than 500 crores, uh, but less than or equal to 2,500 crores, uh, 3 lakhs, and so on and so forth, 4 lakhs and 5 lakhs, for, based on the quantum of claim. So this has been done basically to ensure that the process is a lot faster and smoother because a lot of time, uh, valuable time, of, uh, is wasted in negotiating fees between the resolution professional and the and the and the creditors of the uh, of the corporate debtor. So the IBBI uh, has provided a sort of guidance that a minimum flow rate has been set, and uh, beyond this, also if the creditors feel so, they can, uh, based on the agreement entered into between the resolution professional and the. Uh, and the and the creditors uh, a larger greater fee can also be paid but a minimum uh, fee has been set further uh, the time period within which this minimum fee uh, is to be paid has also been specified in the regulations uh, as you can see from the slide that uh, from appointment of the irp rp uh, till uh, the submission of application for approval uh, of the resolution plan under section 60 uh, under b the submission uh, submission application to liquidate the corporate debtor under Section 33 uh, C, submission of application for withdrawal uh, uh, under Section 12A and D, uh, foreclosure of corporate insolvency resolution, uh, resolution process. So basically, these are the four outcomes that can come out of the CRP process, and whichever uh, outcome is the earliest, that would till that period, uh, this fees has to be uh, uh, has to be paid to the resolution or professional or the IRP. Coming to the uh, next slide. Uh, which deals with uh, another am important amendment that has been made to the corporate insolvency regulations. Uh, first is a performance-linked pay. So this has been an important uh, uh, important amendment to uh, basically ensure uh, that uh, the resolution professionals are uh, motivated to go for a resolution, time go for timely resolution. So the first part is uh, uh, that uh, for time period within which uh, that resolution process is carried out. So if it is less than or equal to 165 days, then one percent of the resolution realizable value uh, has to be uh, has to be paid uh, uh, paid to the resolution professional as fees. If it is more than uh, 165 days, but less than uh, or equal to 270 days, then 0.75 percent of the realizable value. If it is more than 270 days, but less than or equal to 330 days, then 0.5 percent. And if it is crossing beyond the 330 days period, uh, which is our mandatory uh, outer limit for completion of the corporate insolvency resolution process, in that case, uh, no performance-linked pay would be paid because uh, that is the outer limit within which uh, we expect the process to be completed. Secondly, we have also provided a, a, a provision for performance-related pay. In case uh, the uh, the recovery uh, recovery from the process is more than liquidation value of the company that uh, the creditors were able to recover more, in those cases, uh, uh, on after you know, after approval of the resolution plan by the adjudicating authority and while commencing a payment of to creditors by the res resolution applicants, in that case, uh, performance related pay would be uh, paid to the uh, resolution professional. All this was geared towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, to ensure that uh, 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 th th that this uh, th that this performance rated pay that there is an incentive, clear incentive to the resolution professionals to uh, to hope for to go for uh, uh, re resolution uh, the go for resolution of the corporate uh, uh, of the corporate debtors. Secondly, uh, the a regulatory fee of 0.25% uh, uh, has also been imposed uh, 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 has been also been imposed to the resolution realizable value uh, to the creditors. This was done because, uh, and specifically in cases where the resolution value is more than the liquidation value of the company, this was done to ensure that in cases uh, 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 because IBBI sees as a growing body and there would be more expenses in terms of uh, uh, in terms of creating better uh, attracting better manpower in 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 terms of creating better infrastructure in terms of providing better services as well as the future growth of the IB, uh, uh, IBC uh, the manifold duties would come within the IBPI so to ensure that the IBPI is able to uh, financially is financial self sufficient and is able to meet its own expenses a uh, regulatory fee of 0.25 percent uh, has been uh, levied on the uh, has been levied by the board on the realizable value to the creditors. Uh, this would uh, uh, this would also this would ensure that the IBBI uh, is financial self sufficient. The third point as well, uh, similarly, the uh, regulatory fee of one percent. Uh, this was 
uh, earlier a, a little lesser than this amount. So this has also been increased uh, for IPs, IPs, and other professionals and services hired. So these are uh, these are professionals who are uh, who are uh, you know uh, regulated by the IBBI. So to ensure uh, uh, on the, with the same objective that, that for the IBBI to become financially self-sufficient, uh, this fee was in uh, fee was increased. Um, keeping in mind the future uh, future growth as well as the manifold duties that would come along with it uh, for the uh, for the IBPI. So uh, the, after this, um, another amendment has been another important amendments have also been made to the uh, to the CRP regulations, which is uh, given in the next slide. So this uh, first one is the information uh, memorandum. Uh, this is mem information memorandum has also the time period. Uh, the, uh, the basic contents of the information memorandum has been specified uh, in this amendment. Secondly, the timeline has been increased for preparation of the IN so that we see that there is uh, a greater uh, thoroughness in preparation, preparation of the IM. Thirdly, uh, we have also provided uh, uh, the basic details of the CD to be provided in the expression of interest, so that uh, the, the uh, uh, so that there are more resolution resolution applicants are attracted to take over uh, take over the company. Uh, after this, the, the avoidance transactions, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the copy of filed avoidance transactions are also also to be shared with the prospective. The resolution applicants so that they are able to value it and uh, assign proper value in the resolution plan to it and also to prepare a marketing strategy uh, in cases where uh, the assets of the company uh, uh, the corporate debtor are more than 100 crores and it is optional for others where uh, where it is less than 100 crores but the coc may decide it is at the option of the coc to decide that uh, they will uh, 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 they will uh, th they can call for uh, uh, call for, have a have a plan for uh, marketing of these assets. Other amendments include uh, uh, resolution of uh, part resolution of the company as well, where maybe may a certain uh, certain uh, uh, asset of the company is vi is viable, where the others are not. Uh, so this amendment allows part resolution where a certain asset only of the company is uh, is resolved. Uh, secondly, uh, the, this can also uh, this can only, only be done after approval of the resolution plan by uh, by the COC. A common email ID has also been provided uh, uh, provided for CRP and liquidation, so that there is a smooth handing over and taking over uh, from the CRP to the liquidation. We have also provided for guiding factors uh, uh, to decide on an early liquidation of the company in case uh, there is very little value left in the company and whatever little value that could be salvaged uh, can be salvaged. So we have provided, uh, the, the law already provides for it. We have only provided a guiding, uh, providing the guiding factors based on which the COC can take a conscious decision as to whether the company uh, needs to be taken to an early liquidation. Uh, finally, uh, we also uh, have made amendments to the compromise and arrangement, uh, uh, compromise and arrangement provisions as well, where we say that uh, right after the COC has resolved to uh, liquidate the company, and an application is pending before the adjudicating authority. During this, pe during that period only, uh, the COC may explore options for compromise and arrangement, uh, where the uh, where any certain any entity is willing to take over the assets of the company uh, uh, even after resolution uh, resolution has failed and the COC decides to liquidate the company. So this part would be taken liquidation part would be taken over by my colleague Hajanta. Thank you, Saurabh. Uh, various amendments were made to, uh, made uh, in the liquidation regulation as well as uh, with regard to the uh, record retention. The amendments were made in the Quality uh, liquidation process also. So directly going to the amendments made in the liquidation process, uh, it has been provided in September 2022. Uh, liquidation process regulations were amended, and it has provided that the committee of creditors, who were who, which were constituted during the CRP period, shall act as a SEC. That uh, they will continue to work uh, as an SEC, and first meeting of the committee of creditors as an SEC will be held in the, within the seven days. However, within the 60 days, the SEC will be reconstituted, uh, including all the other stakeholders, operational creditors, workmen, and they will be having the voting rights based upon the admitted claims. But the partners, directors, or the related creditors will participate with no voting rights. Additionally, the scope of the SEC has been enlarged. 
it earlier it was provided that they will be advising on the matters related to sale or the professional's remuneration now they have been uh, they have been included for the uh, uh, guiding the avoidance transaction fees of the liquidator replacement of the liquidator valuation and etc in avoidance transaction as similar in the crp process the CS, uh, scc will provide the manner to continue the avoidance transaction after the closure of the liquidation process thereafter in a, if it will also provide that how the uh, this proceeds will be distributed from such proceedings with regard to the fees of the liquidator scc will fix the fee of the liquidator if the fees of the liquidator is not fixed during the uh, crp period when the coc was recommending the liquidation additionally the replacement of the liquidator has also been provided the coc may recommend to change the replace the liquidator with 66% of voting and after that they have to file an application with the educating authority now how the advice of the scc will work it has been provided with the 66% of voting and the manner of voting and the conduct of meeting we have adopted the regulation 18 to 26 crp regulations for the manner and the conduct of the meeting importantly if the liquidator is acting not as per the advice of the scc now the liquidator has to record the reasons and submit to the educating authority as well as to the board within the 5 days amendments were also made in the compromise arrangement the tenure has been decreased 90 days to 30 days since the liquidator is pursuing this compromise and arrangement during the application file for the liquidation order as recommended by the coc the time has been decreased copy of the progress report which will be providing to the aa now will be provided to the board also along with the minutes of the uh, sh- shareholders committee meeting preparation of the asset memorandum in case there is a valuation of the during the crp period and it has been considered the asset memorandum shall be prepared in the 30 days in other case it it will be a 75 days like where there is no valuation or the fresh, fresh valuation is required uh, further this asset memorandum will now be shared with the stakeholders consultation committee as well as with the board submission of the claim this is important here in case the creditors has not submitted their claim during the liquidation period but they have submitted the claim during the crp period that claim shall be considered by the liquidator and he will verify these claims also along with the claims which are submitted during the liquidation period additionally consent form has been provided specified by the board to act as a liquidator time Uh, there has been like uh, timelines for the auction now the auction has to be in within the 45 days in case if there is no compromise on arrangement it has been also provided that the cd as a going concern in the auction sa- sale will be only for the one time uh, otherwise if you if it fails you have to provide you have to provide other manner of sales also it cannot be said that cd as a going concern again and again two three four times if your first is failed cd as a going concern you have to go for the other man- uh, manner of sale also including it and in it has been provided that auction sale notice if the auction fails that within the 15 days the next uh, auction sale notice has to be issued unless uh, uh, stakeholders com- uh, committee agreed differently depends upon the case of facts of the case the uh, amendments were made in the voluntary liquidation as well as, as well as in the liquidation process regarding the record retention now the it has been provided that h- how the records are to be preserved which records are to be preserved by whom and what will how the treatment of the cost everything so they have provided that the records retention after the closure of the liquidation process and the voluntary liquidation process this records of the cd will be preserved in the uh, physical form for the minimum 3 years and in the electronic form 8 years unless there is any other law requires a longer period then the ips had to take care of this if there is an investigation or inspection is pending again you have to take consider that you have to maintain you may have to maintain the records for the longer period 
which records have to be provided, general records of the CD, as per the requirements of the Companies Act, they have to see. By whom the records has to be preserved, it is the liquidator in case of the liquidation process after the closure of the liquidation process. And if the CD has is sold as a going concern, the successful bidder will preserve these records, uh, which will be handed over by the liquidator. After that, in case of the voluntary liquidation, it is important that a person shall be specified in the resolution while commencing the voluntary liquidation. So it will be during the initiation only, it has to be clarified that which person will preserve the records after the closure of the voluntary liquidation process. Cost of the preservation of records. Liquidator has to make the best estimate since it is for the three years in the uh, physical and the electronic eight years. So he will make the best estimate of the cost, cost and this cost will be included in the liquidation cost. But for the voluntary liquidation, this cost shall be borne by the corporate person is itself. And liquidator can also use the IU services for uh, uh, preservation of records on payment of certain fees. In case of the replacement of the liquidator, the new liquidator shall prepare all, uh, preserve all the records uh, of the CD which has been provided. Now, indicative list of the records have been provided for the guidance of the liquidator and how with there can be additional documents uh, which depends upon the facts of the case. So these were the amendments made in the CRP regulations, liquidation, IU, and IP regulations. I would like to mention that there is a comprehensive PPT on the IBBI What's New section with regard to CRP regulations and the liquidation regulations. Stakeholders can uh, uh, view the same. With this, we conclude our session, and thank you so much. Dhanyavad.